Hello everybody and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. This is a channel dedicated to your enjoyment of wine, whether you are studying this wonderful topic or you are just in it for the pure enjoyment. I put together videos which help you with all major concepts of wine production and wine consumption. Welcome to a series here on storing and service. It affects all of us, whether you're studying it or whether you are just practicing moderate wine consumption at home. So we're going to be looking here at the series on service of wine. And we're on part three here, talking about how to open wine properly. If you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch. This presentation follows syllabus of WSET level three very closely. So if you are studying, you'll find this very useful. Okay, so let's begin with opening a still wine. Now, when you have selected the wine that you have desire to get stuck into, the first barrier you have, I suppose, actually, is selecting your corkscrew. There's a variety of corkscrews out there. The waiter's friend that you see in green in that picture is one of the most readily available and actually most positive. Uh, there are those ones that look like somebody exercising with two arms. They tend to be quite difficult to use, certainly for corks, which are a little bit more mature. But you'll see this knife, this corkscrew comes with a knife. It has a two prong lever system and then the, uh, the tapered screw. Uh, they're very useful uh, to, to have. Some of them come with a foil cutter as well. And that's what we're looking at here on the first slide is that we need to remove the capsule if it does have one. So most wine today is still finished at the top of the bottle with a foil capsule. Um, now, the best way of removing, removing this is by cutting, you'll see where this picture is located, underneath the lip of the bottle, not the top, because it actually is much more of a serrated edge on that top. Underneath, it's tucked away a little bit more. So you remove it around the bottom and you take off that circular part of the foil. Now, I've put a warning sign there to the right hand side please be very careful. Foil, when it's cut, becomes quite serrated and quite dangerous. Now, if you're at home and you are enjoying wine casually, you're not taking pictures for social media, you're not in a service of wine environment, all you need to do is just grab the foil and just take it off, okay? The safest, easiest way of doing it. But if you're wanting to keep the foil on the top, uh, maybe you are presenting the wine, taking pictures of the wine and so on, then you must do it in this method, cutting below the lip, but please be very careful. Next time you are hanging out with a sommelier, or maybe you are a sommelier, you'll know that their fingers are very much cut around their thumb to their main finger because of foil. They probably open something like 50 bottles in a, in a shift, so there's a lot of potential for cuts here, the very sore part, dangers of the job, of course. So we've got rid of the foil. The next step is to wipe the neck of the bottle with a cloth. And this is for service. If you're at home, of course, this is not uh, absolutely pertinent. But if you are in service, you might have a bit of mold on the top of the cork if it's slightly older, and you might have a little bit of a reaction between the foil and condensation and moisture, which can create a little bit of a, a tinge around the, the bottle neck. So you can wipe that off with a cloth. Next is the methodology of uh, taking the cork out. Uh, so utilizing a decent corkscrew here is another waiter's friend with a two prong attack. So you have a knife on the top, you have your tapered screw, and then you have your two, what I mean by two prongs, two levers. So you place the top lever to begin with, which is this lip here on the metal, and then you pull, and then you position the second one to give you more leverage. 
uh, thus giving you a different fulcrum point to pull out quite easily. They're very, very useful. Now, when you are placing the tapered screw within the cork, uh, don't aim for the center because that will actually offset it. It's best to aim somewhere a little bit off center. So then the full tapered circle would be kind of circular around the middle of the cork. And go. Uh, you can go about this far in, up to about one left taper at the top is about perfect. Certainly because some uh, cork screws, or sorry, some corks are quite long. So it's good to get it quite far in. I often see people only going about halfway down on the taper. That can cause a split in the cork, certainly for older corks. OK, now there is a discussion to be had around other things you can use. There is the tongs that you can use for older corks. They fit in down the side and you spin it off. Uh, estates such as Chateau Musa in Leban actually give them away with some of their oldest wines because it is a more useful approach to taking the cork out. So there are other things you can utilize as well. Now, of course, this will be very different for a screw cap, which is just taking off quite easily. Uh, you just unscrew it off, uh, which is very simple. Then after that, it's giving the neck another clean uh, inside and out. So this time just cleaning the inside because some cork residue could be sitting there. And when you are serving to a customer, it is not pleasant to have small bits of cork floating in your glass. So that would be the next step in service. And then, of course, pouring it out into a glass to check the wine condition will be done by a sommelier and it will be done by the head of the table or who's ordered the wine. Then there are lots of, uh, I suppose, uh, tradition around how to pour after that. Of course, it depends on where you are. In service in the United Kingdom, we generally uh, once the person who ordered it has said the wine is OK, it is then poured out to the women at the table, then the men, and then finally the, the person who once ordered that wine at the beginning. But it may change everywhere you go. Then we are going to talk about how to open a sparkling wine where there's a little bit more emphasis on the uh, real sort of preparation of the bottle. And what I mean by that, we know that in a sparkling wine bottle, there is considerable pressure up to six atmospheres of pressure. So that cork really can want to come out with that pressure. So chilling the bottle in preparation to the correct temperature helps to reduce this. Remember on a previous presentation, this is somewhere between six degrees Celsius and 10 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit off the top of my head. I can't remember now, but something like 50s to 60s, maybe, or maybe sort of in the 50s. Now, that chilling means that the pressure is not expanding. So it, there's less opportunity for that cork to come flying out. But even if you have chilled it down to, say, ice bucket temperature, please still be careful with that cork because it may still want to come out fairly intensively or violently and it can really cause damage it can hurt somebody it is said to come out at the speed of a greyhound when it shoots out so be very carefully thank god they're not pointy in any way shape or form um, so we've got the preparation of the bottle, OK? So we've prepared it to a very chilled temperature. We then carefully take off the foil, remembering from earlier that foil is dangerous. So please be very careful with the cuts it can do. And then loosen the wire cage. The wire cage has a little side handle to it which you pull down and start to unravel. But all the time, make sure that your thumb is sitting on top. So once the foil is off, your thumb immediately goes on top as a kind of human safety mechanism, just in case that cork can come out, okay? And then you loosen that wire cage. You don't take the wire cage off. Please leave it in combination with the cork, but loose. 
So there you are. You've got your thumb on the top, the loosened wire cage, and you are uh, unraveling the wire cage. Um, but this is all a protective measure. Then please tilt the bottle away from you and away from other people at an angle of about 30 degrees, gripping the cork and then using your other hand at the base of the bottle, please turn the bottle, not the cork. And hopefully with that small movement, you will feel some pressure with the cork wanting to move and then you will be holding it in place here with a cloth, a very sensible to use a cloth because of course in service this is very typical and it should eventually come out and the gas pressure should be released with a very quiet hiss or a foot uh, not an explosive powerful pop but it depends if you're celebrating and the whole point of it is a bit of theater then of course pop it but if you are serving in a very nice establishment please do think about the, the gentle method, of course. So that is it. Uh, you would, of course, pour that then out for them to taste, as usual, as mentioned before. That brings me to a conclusion. Please do join me for part four as we talk about how you should decant wine. Um, there is one thing, actually, that I haven't mentioned in this series, and that is the use of wax. You will find that wax is on some bottles instead of a foil stopper. Now, if it's wax, the best thing you can do is get the cork straight in there as you, uh, sorry, the corkscrew straight in there as you would a cork, um, sorry, as you would with a normal bottle and go straight in and take the whole of the wax off with the cork. Don't try and and peel the, cork, uh, the wax off because it may sort of uh, be very brittle and it may sort of shatter into many parts and be very messy. Uh, so best to sort of take it off as one unit. Yes, do join me for decanting next. That is on part four. Uh, any comments or questions, please do get in touch. And until next time, I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.